we bring to you the inspired word of God as you listen to the teachings and preachings of a servant of God, Hosanna David, preaching the end time gospel. You are welcome in Jesus' name. Be seated. So today we want to continue and the topic of today is good faith positive results good faith positive results is there anything like bad faith bad faith eh? yes there is bad faith uh, faith is actually believing God for positive things when someone starts believing that the sky will fall uh, the clouds in the sky everything will collapse and the person believes 100 percent that when it collapses every human being in the world will die is that a good faith that's bad faith um today we want to look at the story of the prodigal son it it has a lot of negativity uh, it, it projects a lot of negative things. Although Jesus told the story about uh, the compassion of God. And if you want to apply it to us humans, the compassion of a father. But there are some things we can still learn from the story of this young man. And that is what we want to look at today. We are not trying to say that uh, this young man has done well and therefore there is need to praise him no but personally i like to have a very broad mind i like to look at things from the academic point of view you look at the advantages and look at the disadvantages look at the positive um, side and the negative side in all the decisions this young man made uh, there was a point in time, the Bible says that, and when he came to his senses, that means he was, there was a time he was out of his senses, but finally he had to come to resolve. So there are some positive things. After he came to his senses, there were some things this young man did that actually worked out uh, for him and he achieved his desired goals. But even in his stubbornness, there were some steps this young man took that we can pick some lessons from, from some positive lessons from. The story, this young man's name was not actually mentioned, but we are told that he was the youngest, uh, the younger son. But because of uh, his attitude, the way he behaved, there is a title attached to his name. And what is that title? Prodigal. And everybody calls him the prodigal son. Prodigal son. May that not be our portion in Jesus' name. So if we read Luke chapter 15, 11 following, uh, we are going to do a little bit of teaching this morning. And he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that followed to me. And he divided unto them his living. I don't know the level of boldness that this son had. It's not the first son. He doesn't supposed to receive the this double portion. The first son had never conceived any idea like that. But the younger, the younger son just woke up one day, met his father. Uh, let's bring it to this our environment. This our environment. Uh, how, who can dare ask his father that kind of question? I remember the day I asked my dad. Uh, Daddy, how old are you? <laughs> he told me 
Are you asking, why are you asking of my age? So that you do my burial. <laughs> that was the question he asked me. But I know my mother told me, the, I asked her, she told me when she was born, eh, many times I forgot, I will ask her again. Mommy, how old are you? How old are you? When did you say you were born that time? Uh, she will remind me again. The day I asked my dad, how old are you? It was a problem. Do you know that after we did this barrier, we saw his national ID card and the original age we wrote on, uh, we declare as his age was actually a year, um, was minus one year. Because we didn't actually know his real age. So I begin to imagine the level of boldness this young son, the younger son, had in mind to meet his father face to face and ask him, Father, I want you... You know, there are some questions that could be so shocking that you begin to ask more questions before you answer the question. What are you talking about? Do you mean the profit we made? Or what are you trying to say? No, Daddy, I mean... You know, uh, nobody lives forever. One day you will die. And what I am saying is that when finally you die, you know, you supposed to, are supposed to inherit some things from you. And it is that one, but can't we just wait till when I die? No, daddy, but you know, whatever we be, we be. I don't want to wait. So have you been praying that I should die on this one? Is a, you can read many, but... Uh, uh, all I just want is that give me the path that's supposed to go to me. I want to go and live my life as well. I was just thinking that what could give this child this level of boldness? We were not told that he left with his friends. He didn't live with his friends. It was after he got to the far country that he spent everything in riotous living. I start thinking, uh, is it that his friend convinced him? If his friends actually convinced him, probably he would have left with one or two. Is it the way the father lived with him? I've seen parents who would tell their children, I can do anything for you. I can do anything for you. If you pass your exams, ask me anything, I will do it for you. I have seen parents who are so loving. And because of that, their children have some level of faith in them. That if I ask my father for anything, he will do it for me. We have a God... Who is the maker of everything? Yet there are some things that some of us don't want to ask for. We have to learn this lesson. If a son could meet his father face to face and say, I need what I'm supposed to get after your death now. Look at the level of faith. Do you think that uh, immediately he told his father, the father just shared the things and gave his part to him. I believe there is a process of, okay, you go and sleep over it. Um, and then, you call his friends. Please, try to talk to this your friend. The idea he's bringing is not from this world at all. I've never heard about it. I believe he tried to persuade his son, but his son believed that if I ask my father for this thing, even though it's supposed to come before, uh, after his death, he will give me. Look at faith. Is that faith? Some people refuse to answer. Is that faith? How can you ask a living man to give you his properties? When he is not dead, we are not talking about write a will. This is not a will. Daddy, write a will. I want to see the will before you die because I don't trust this, my brother. That's a different case. 
You know, a will, the Bible says that a will does not come into effect until the death. It is when somebody dies that you can execute and implement a will. This is not a will. This is, I have assumed you are dead. Let us travel to years to come and let us assume you are dead and share the property now. He believed. Did he get what he wanted or not? Probably it could be that the father has been so caring and he is really caring. Do you know why I said he's caring? Um, the son made a statement after he came to his senses in um, verse 17 of Luke 15, verse 17. And when he came to himself, he said, how many hired servants of my fathers of my fathers have bread enough and to spare? And I perish with hunger. That means servants serving under his father were robust. They used to eat and have left over. That was how caring the father was. Very, very caring. That even servants eat and have left over. How much more the son? That means the father was very, very caring. And the son thought to himself, this is my father that is very, very caring. If I ask him for this thing, I know he loves me. He will not say no. There was uh, someone, <laughs> the person is here. The, the child wanted a computer and I told the child, please pity your daddy's salary. Oh. Pity his salary. The computer the child wanted was high. But do you know that the child believes that my daddy is going to get something very good for me. And finally, when I asked, how far? How much? <laughs> I say, you strong go. In this harsh economy. But that is faith. You don't know how much in your, is in your father's account. But you believe that my father can go out of his way to provide me this. Whether he has the money or not, he will do something. That is faith. Like when your children wake, wake up sometimes, they will tell you, eh, Mommy, I want to drink tea. And, and they know that just yesterday somebody came asking you to pay for the money you are owing. And you couldn't provide five kobo. And here they are telling you they need food now. Is that faith or not? Because they believe that whether you have it or not, your love for them will move you to go and provide something. That is faith. How much more the God whose throne is in heaven and the whole of the earth and the gold, the silver, the emerald, all the precious stones, they are his foes too. How much more that God? There are some things that some of us don't want to mention. When we come before God in prayer, there are some things that we feel, no, 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 I shouldn't ask God for this. This could be too much for me. There are some people who will love you because of your boldness. I've read, I've read about a story, okay, it's a video, of a lady who had so much money but got married to a homeless man. She had so much money. Her, the, first, the first point of attraction, what actually attracted the lady so much was what level of boldness has this young man? So ask for my hand in marriage. This homeless man, I mean homeless, homeless.
Some of us we feel that if we ask God for some things, He will be offended. But here is a son who asked for the impossible and he got it. Let's move on. Do we know that Jesus Christ made this statement in Matthew 18, 19? Matthew 18, 19. Again, I say unto you that if two of you agree on earth as touching anything, I mean any, any, anything, anything, not some things, not low things, any, 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 including telling the son, you son, stand still until I'm, I'm finished with my enemies. Until I have finished all my enemies, moon, stand still. Including that. Including telling inanimate river. River that has no life. That path I want to cross. There are things that we're supposed to lay command on. And not even pray for. It's yesterday I was telling somebody, I was in a tricycle and I was telling somebody that Nigeria, we pray too much. There are things that we don't supposed to pray about at all. There are things that we don't supposed to pray about. We pray too much and a lot of times we don't pray correctly. So we don't get results. With the authority vested in us, as the only legal beings, only legal persons that have dominion to exercise the delegated authority of God on earth, there are things we don't supposed to pray for. There are commands that we're supposed to release and we'll get results when we believe. Some of us have not come to know the extent that God values us as humans. But how many of us know that even God is limited to an extent, not because he's not all powerful, but because he respects his word, because he respects the institution of humanity on earth. God is very, very limited. When human beings fail to do their work on earth, there are things that God will never do and can never do in this world. Because primarily, he handed over this earth to us who are humans. So, God will never override. The Bible says that you have lifted above all things your name. God has lifted his word above all his name. God will never stand up against himself. A kingdom that rises up against itself can never prosper. God is his word. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. God is his word. Take God for his word. Take the word of God for God. You get results. So when God says, I, I hereby hand over this earth to you, man. God will never come to this earth to do some certain things until men pray and bring God down. There are things that God will never do in this world. Even for Jesus to come and operate. And do you know a kind of scriptural revelation I got one day? I never read it anywhere. I was asking myself, why was Jesus calling himself? He had a very preferred title, the son of man. The son of man. Do you know why? He was always calling himself the son of man. Not God. That the son of man. Jesus was not so much interested in projecting himself to people as God. Because when he came to earth, he came as man. God in the flesh. Why? Because it was illegal for any other being or deity to operate on earth. That is why Satan has no home address. There is no parcel of land you can say, this parcel of land belongs to Lucifer. No. But they can take over territories when men give them the legal authority to stay. They have no address.
address. Satan moves to and fro. To and fro means here and there. Before Jesus could come, he had to take on himself the body of man. He needed a body to operate on earth. He needed a body like yours to operate. So when he came, he was always referring himself to as the son of man. I am human. I am not God here. I am not God here. It was there I was God. He came, although he was a Christ. He himself was Jesus first before he became the Christ. Jesus the Christ. Jesus as human and he shall be called, the son shall be called Jesus. He needed a body. He said sacrifice and offering. You don't desire. But a body you have prepared for me. He needed a body prepared for him before he could operate here. How much more we that have this body? And look at Jesus. Whenever demons were to um, open up his identity, he would keep quiet. He would silence them. I cast the demons out. Before you expose me to everybody, keep quiet. But when Bartimaeus was calling, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Son, David was a man. He was screaming, have mercy on me, son of David, I know you. Jesus so much loved that title. Because in always calling himself the son of man, he was saying, I have right to operate here. I did not come as God Almighty. I am here as the seed of the woman. And he was always affirming it. I am the son of man. The son of man. The son of man. When demons hear it, was this man actually born? By human being? By a human being? Yes. That is why he was not ashamed to, to live in the womb of Mary for nine months. Because it is illegal for any other spirit to come to this earth to operate. So why am I explaining this? So that you will know that there are no actually limitations to your faith as far as this world is concerned. If you, were, if you give somebody an assignment, you also equip the person with everything they need to function. So, God, we always make sure that we have everything we need for life and for godliness. The Bible says his divine power has given us everything we need. Why? Because we will give account. So, if we don't have everything we need, we will not be able to function well. And whenever we lack anything... To enable us function, and we said, God, I need this thing. He brings it. Because he wants effectiveness. Is somebody following me? Are you following? If you ask for anything, especially when there is agreement, I will do it. And in John 14, 14, Jesus says, if you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Look at the prodigal son. Probably the father used to tell him, I love you so much. Both of you, I love you so much. You see all this wealth, don't steal from outside. If you need anything, ask me, I will give to you. I love you. When I leave, you will inherit all this. And the son says, hey, you mean I'm going to inherit all these things? In fact, the tomorrow is now. The future is now. Let's bring the future down here. If it is my right, let me test the right. Let me test your world. So really know if everything belongs to me and my brother. 
Do you know that? We can hold God by his word. <laughs> Sometimes we pray and pray and pray and pray. God does not say anything. God is not a babbler of words. God, God is not a talkative. Because he means everything he says. And he says everything he means. God is not like us humans who would say many, 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 many things, many, 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 many things. And we not do them. Or if we say, uh, I don't think that in actually, are you sure I made that promise to you? God doesn't say that. Look at the son again. He left his father's house. He left his father's house. The Bible says, Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. And they two shall be what? Shall be one what? Shall be one flesh. Even though he left his father and mother, he made a mistake by not getting married. Let me tell you. For those of us who have experienced strong bachelorhoods, there are expenses, I want to tell you one big truth. There are expenses you will continue to run until, until you become one flesh with a woman. Once you are married, there are some people who will never come to you for some level of help. And that is what I tell my family member. Let us all grow up together. The day I marry, don't come to me. Now, you can ask. Let us all grow. But tomorrow, don't come and ask me for rent. And do you know that even my youngest, the, the youngest among us, was even telling me recently, I don't like your way of life. Think about yourself. You cannot use your salary to take loan and help your brother. And I told him, you don't know that it is dangerous. It's dangerous. When you give your year, a year's salary to someone and he wastes his account back to you in your zero level. It's dangerous. That is why after the death of Jesus, it becomes dangerous on the day of judgment to tell God to show you mercy. Because he has done everything. It's like after Isaac has blessed Jacob and Esau comes up to say, is there nothing left for me? This young man refused to settle down. And the way he spent his money was on a riotous living. He refused to settle. But the man actually left his father and mother. He left home to a far country. He believed in independence. He believed that there is a point you get to and you need to be on your own. There are some of us, we are in our parents' homes. Let me tell you one big truth. Until you face challenges, until inconveniences come, your brain will never think about invention. It is in the face of lack that people think outside the bus. When you face lack, there is trouble. That is when people start thinking about solution. There are Many of us, so long as we remain in our parents' homes, we will never think out of the bus. Pick up challenges. This young man left his parents' home. It was, it was actually not a very good idea because 
he was not matured to handle wealth. That's one prayer I pray every time. I say, God, I want to be rich, but don't give me the money that will control me. And so, I put some laws in place. I use some ropes to tie myself. Some principles I put in place. So that if I see money, I don't get confused. There was a day I was preaching and I said, any day I tie wristwatch of 100,000 naira, I will be needing a brain scan and brain surgery to check my brain, whether I still work in where. I mean, till I leave this world, a wristwatch of a hundred thousand naira. You may not understand, but the way I see life is different. I see life from a very different point of view. If you had stayed in life before, and from morning to evening you couldn't eat because you have no food, the day you see money, you will know how to press calculator very well and write down your order of preference before you go to the market. You won't spend money anyhow. This young man had been in wealth all his life. The slaves, the servants, they eat and have leftovers. He grew up in this environment and he took his father's wealth, not his wealth. His father was still alive. The wealth supposed to go to him after the death of the father. He took his father's wealth to a far country and spent them. Because he had no managerial ability. Someone met me and was telling me, if I sell, I don't see the money. I say, I say, wait, before I pray and bind one witch and kill one devil, let me ask you some questions. Where do you stay? She lives very far. Where is your shop? Igudu Market. She lives outside Wari. What do you do? What is the average of the money you have every day? She told me. Do you cook food from home or you buy in the market? She said, hey, you know, when we well, hurry, uh, I don't need to cook food. I buy it there. That means profit enters another person's pocket. Me, I don't buy food. I cook my food. Some of you see me in market. Don't you see me? I take my bag and go to the market and buy food and cook it. I did food and nutrition in school. I can cook. Even though it's not very well, I know how to cook well. You understand me? Because, listen, you buy food and eat every day. Me, I have never picked a thousand naira note to buy a plate of food in my life any day. You say, ah, I've never picked a thousand naira note. There is a young man in this church. The day I saw him eating how many uh, uh, pieces of meat, he used to ask me for money. I said, over. <laughs> I told him the day he came to me, I said, you are better than I do. You do better than I do. The food I saw you eating, I've never eaten that food any day. So, I, you should be giving to me, not me giving to you. I asked this young woman, how much do you eat in a day? She told me. I did calculation for her. So, the witch is nowhere else. If I had prayed and asked God to kill one devil or two devils, she would have died. Little drops of water makes an ocean. The person that is cooking is making money. You are taking profits to the person. Why don't you create time to cook the food and let the profit enter your pockets? Meanwhile, you don't even know where they are cooking the food. If you go to some of these places where they are cooking, if you see the wrapper, the person is tying, flies, the whole of that environment. You don't see flies elsewhere. They come here because they don't drive them here. They eat very freely. After eating, people buy the leftover. What flies eat? After flies have eaten, people come to buy the leftover. 
And people will be licking mats and holding plates be on a queue. This young man spent all in a riotous living. But there is something this young man did. When he saw that even his friends that spent the wealth with him was no, they were not given to him. He went and hired himself out. To so somebody who had a pigry, who was operating pigry, pig farms, and he was managing. Do you know that it is uh, the worst to actually express my thoughts? And I can't find it because it is serious. Do you know that for a rich man to become poor is very, very dangerous? Compare a rich man who became poor to a poor man who has always been poor all his life. Do you know there are some level of heat that will not make people like us to sweat? Because our skin has been used to the heat. But bring a rich man from his AC. The water in his body will drain off. Give him an, an hour. Because he is no use to it. This young man haven't grown up like that. He still came to a level of his senses and hired himself out. Instead of hiring a gun and try to meet up with life, let me tell you, if you had money before and corona has taken away your wealth, it may be a season of your life. Don't deceive people. Tell them I used to have now, especially those who are very close to you. Tell them, let them understand your season. Some of us, we borrow to make up for our name. You borrow to defend your name that you used to be rich. Now you are no longer rich. Why don't you tell them I'm no longer rich? Life is in stages and in phases. No condition is permanent. Let the people also know that this is what you are passing through. So that when you give them a dime, they will be able to manage it well. So instead of this young man to go and kill himself, commit suicide, or join himself to bank gangs, he still believed that if I work hard, I will make money. And he went. Is that faith or not? Okay, lastly. Have he done all this? He had to still go back to his father. With what audacity? Having wasted my wealth, you are coming to me. You know that there are some things this young man could not move out. Because you can't move a land. There are some um, inheritance you cannot move to travel. Probably he sold them. She particle, who won't buy, who won't buy, who won't buy. Sold them. And he was coming back empty handed. Not with a donkey carrying loads. The father saw him, ran to him. This son knew that his father has a lot of compassion. And he still believed that if I can humble myself and go to him. There are some of us who are praying for helpers. Do you know that your helper is supposed to be in your tongue? Your helper is in your tongue just telling your helper that I am sorry, forgive me. Somebody is waiting for you to say, I am sorry, forgive me. But pride, pride is killing some of us. And we are disturbing vicar. Pray for me, oh. no help out. Pray for me, oh. Instead of just saying, I am sorry, forgive me. Some of us are too proud. This young man forgot about pride. He had faith that if I can go back to my father, he will forgive me. How many of us have faith? Let me... Read the last scripture. This is very, very tempting. In Isaiah chapter Isaiah 7, verse 11. Ask thee a sign of the Lord thy God. Ask it either in the depth or in the height above. This is God speaking. He said, Ask for anything, ask for a sign. I know that a sign. Signs are for unbelievers. True children, they don't ask for signs. But this is someone saying, God Almighty, that asks for any sign. I'll do it. Like somebody presenting you a check, say, write any amount. Write. Write any amount. 
Do you know that God is waiting for us to ask for anything? Be on your feet. We'll take this prayer point. Lord, help my own belief. Increase my faith. Open your mouth and pray. Lord, help my own belief. Increase my faith. A lot of times you want me to act. A lot of times you need invitation that God come down. I carry your spirit and I need divine intervention. Come down. A lot of times we don't even ask you, Lord. Forgive our faithfulness and increase our faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Holy Spirit, thank you. As many of us who are believing in fear don't want to ask, even some of us believe that God can never forgive us again. Lord, we have heard the story of the prodigal son. Who had faith in his father and he believed that my father has a lot of compassion and he will forgive me. Truly, he was forgiven. Lord, give us the spirit to go back to you. For as many who have condemned themselves, Lord, give them the spirit, the faith to go back to you. As many who are facing one challenge or the other, may your faith lift you up. May the faith that you have, no matter how small, let it lift you up. Amen. Grow in faith. Amen. Grow in grace. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. We hope you were blessed by this message. For more information, visit our website www.hosannadavid.com Email us at info at hosannadavid.com God bless you.